Good morning and welcome to another Moment in the Word. We're looking at John chapter 17, verses 18 and 19. Yesterday we looked at how can the believer be in the world and yet not of the world. And today we're asking the question, so what is our purpose in the world? What is it we're to be doing? Well, Jesus answers that question in his prayer as we continue in our Lord's high priestly prayer in John 17. Here's what he says in verse 18 and 19. As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified through your truth. Well, that really raises a lot of questions, doesn't it? Those words sanctify and how is it that Jesus, who is holy, could sanctify himself? There's a lot of stuff there, isn't there? Anytime you have questions, by the way, always go to the Lord in prayer. It is the Holy Spirit that will lead us into all truth and will make known to us what we don't understand. Sometimes commentators and others can be very helpful, and sometimes they are like sheep and they can lead us astray. So it's really important that you pray. As we look at the context, and it's always wise to do that, we look at John 17, 17, and he said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. That the word sanctified, to be made holy, that is an internal work, and it happens through the word of God and by the spirit of God. His spirit works from within. When you became a Christian, what changed? Your hair color didn't change. Your stature didn't change. Your intelligence didn't change. What changed? What changed is his Holy Spirit came into you, and you were declared holy by the blood of Christ. His word now continues to sanctify you, to make you holy. That's the external work. And now Jesus is talking about as you, Father, have sent me, so send I you, and I sanctify myself, that they may be sanctified. That's the external work. It's the mission that God has given to his church. And so this gets really exciting. Notice he says, as you have sent me, I send them. The you and the I are equal. In other words, Jesus is saying, I and the Father are one. Once again, we see that Jesus is God. And he says, all power you will receive from on high, and you shall be my witnesses. That power comes from the Holy Spirit. Why did the Father send Jesus into the world? Anytime you find that word sent here, for instance, it's apostello. Apostle is your English word. It is made up of two Greek words. Apo, a preposition, that means with. And stello, we get our English word stylus. It means to be sent with papers. You've been commissioned. You've been given a, a, a responsibility to carry out an order. And so this is what Jesus was given as a commission, and it has to do with his incarnation. He put on flesh so that you, in your apostleship, in you being commissioned, might receive his spirit. And so why did he put on flesh? So he could reveal the glory of God. And as a result, what is your responsibility? To make known Christ's glory. He came into the world to also overcome the evil one and to destroy the works of the devil. What is your responsibility? Yours is to stand against the evil of the day and having done all, stand. And Jesus' work was to make known grace and truth. And what is your responsibility? You're the prima facie evidence of God's grace and mercy. You're to live a life that is so different from the rest of the world, they can see God's grace and God's truth in you. 
Jesus came to save sinners. What is your responsibility? Just as the Father has sent him, he's sending you to proclaim the good news, the gospel that Jesus saves sinners. Jesus came as holy light. He says, I'm the light of the world. What's your responsibility and mine? We are to be shining as lights in a dark place. Jesus called us to be the light and the salt of the earth. So as you look at this passage, Jesus sent, was sent by the Father, and he sends you and me. He sent the eleven, and the responsibility is to carry out the work, the ongoing work that he had here on earth. But now he says in verse 19, for their sakes, it's actually for them in the Greek, for them, so he can, you can put your name in there, for you. He sanctified himself. Well, what does that mean? Jesus is already holy, he's sinless, so why did he sanctify himself? If you knew the Torah and you knew the book of Deuteronomy, and in verse chapter 15, verse 19, you would know that the firstborn are sanctified, they're set apart. And that what Jesus is now talking about is, is that while he had been sanctified by the Father, he is now sanctifying himself in preparation to die on Calvary's cross. He is preparing himself as the Passover lamb. He is our Passover who is sacrificed for us. Jesus is purposing within himself, preparing himself, just as the lambs would be prepared by the, by the priests to be sacrificed, so the same for you. Ah, but this is really incredible, because while Jesus prepared, sanctified himself for us, that we might be sanctified. Are we to be sacrificed as lambs? No, there is only one lamb, that is the Lord Jesus. Instead, we are a kingdom of priests, and that he has prepared us to now be living sacrifices. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. We're to be living sacrifices. Notice what he also said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So now your mission, my mission, is in the world. As John Wesley would say, the whole world is my parish. Wherever you're going, while you're going, it could be to the store, it could be to church, it could be to school, it could be to the workplace, it could be just simply taking a stroll around the block. As you're going, you make Jesus known because he is the world's only hope. He is the creator of the world. He's the savior of the world. And if he's changed your life, then you have been deputized, made an apostle by him to carry out the Great Commission. Finally, he said, by the truth. The very thing that the Father does he said, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. He now says the commissioning is also by the truth. And what is the truth? It's the word of God. It is the person of the Lord Jesus. I pray you know the truth today. I pray that you are excited about sharing the good news with others. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you. We praise you that your word is living and powerful. We praise you that your word has changed us. And we pray if there's any that do not know you, that if they, Father, do not know Messiah, that truly they would come to understand that the world is a dark place and there is no hope, but in Jesus there is, and that they would acknowledge him as Messiah, for it's in his precious name we pray. Amen.